In this video, I'm going to show you how to take data from more than two samples of organized data and conduct an F-test to see whether the samples come from different populations. And in so doing, we're going to use the data analysis tool pack. Now, what do I mean by organized data? This will become a little bit more apparent when we look at the next video when our data is going to be a little bit less organized. So for this video, we're in the workbook 1415 ANOVA, and we're in the worksheet 7th grade math. I've written out here the steps for the F-test, and we'll be following along with these. So this problem is asking you, given the sample data to the left, do the math scores of 7th graders differ by state? So here we have four different states, Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York, and these are test scores that were given to 7th graders. So the first thing we want to do is write out what do we know. So what's our dependent variable? What's the thing we're trying to explain the variation in? Well, this would be math scores, right? So our math scores, that's just some number. That's an interval level variable. And our independent variable is the state, which is a nominal level variable. So this is the criteria we need for analysis of variance and also how many categories do we have, how many samples, well one, two, three, four. If we had two, we would do a two sample t-test, if we have more than two, we use analysis of variance. Now n, how do we get that? So a couple different ways we can look at this, so we can just highlight here our data set and say, well, all right, it's telling us up in the box, the name box, that we have 30 rows and four columns and 30 times 4 is 120. We could, we could do it that way. I'll let go now. The name box is right up there. And another way to do that, if you can't do the math in your head like that, you can just use the count function. Similar to the count if function we used before, this is just counting up all the numbers. And I can just select all of the data and not the headers. And I'll hit enter and you can see that our formula here is giving us the same exact answer as we did just in our head math. So there were four different samples and each sample had 30 seventh graders in it. And this question is telling us perform a hypothesis test to alpha equals 0.05 so I'm going to put 0 0.05 right there. So our hypothesis is going to be that the average math scores of 7th graders differ by state and our null hypothesis is going to be that the average math scores of 7th graders do not differ by state. So for what we should use symbolic notation as always so our null hypothesis is that all of our population means are equal. So you can write out, you know, mu for Delaware equals mu for New Jersey equals mu for Pennsylvania equals mu for New York if you want to, but I'm just putting one, two, three, four. And our research hypothesis is that they are going to be different. And actually and actually the proper notation here is not necessarily that all of them are unequal, even though I'm writing that here. The proper notation is really that at least one of them is different. So I'll just write that right here. At least one of the means differs from the others. And analysis of variance is not really telling us which one is different. We can do an eyeball check and we can see is one mean really far apart from the other ones and look at the variance and compare those types of things, but it's not really telling us which one. If we wanted to check which one, we would have to do a two-sample t-test and look at, for example, is Delaware different from New Jersey? Is Delaware different from Pennsylvania? Is Delaware different from New York? Um, we could do that kind of post hoc test. But we don't really need to worry about that for now. We're just doing a basic analysis of variance. At least one of the means differs from the others is what I'm trying to convey with this notation here. So our 
degrees of freedom between is k minus 1, so equals k minus 1. It's going to give us 3. And our degrees of freedom within is n minus k, so equals n minus k. Enter. And our critical f, I'll show you how to do this. Um, even though your next step is going to do this, it's good to always kind of check in to make sure your analysis of variance is, is doing the right thing. So the formula for this is just f dot inverse, and we're doing the right-tailed one. It's asking us to select the probability, which is alpha. The first degrees of freedom is between, and the second degrees of freedom is within. Enter. So this is our critical f statistic, so this is the point right here for our f. The critical f is right here, and this is the critical region to the right of it. Now our third step is to do our analysis of variance. Okay, so how do we do that? Now we're going to use our data analysis tool pack. So if you're up into the data tab, so different tabs up here, you're in the data tab, you click on data analysis. Now we're going to choose the option all the way at the top. Sometimes it can be down here, you know, just scroll up to the top, click on single factor, and click OK. It asks you to put in the input range, and the way to do that, you can click on this guy right here, and you can select the cell to your input. Um, if you choose to select the labels, make sure you select that you've selected labels. What do I mean by that? So if I hit enter now, here there's an option labels in first row. So if you don't select them, don't select this. If you do include the labels, say that you've included them. And just to confirm, our alpha level was 0.05. We'll leave that as it is. And we'll put our output range. We're going to put it still right in the same worksheet, rather than a new workbook or a new worksheet. So we're going to put it right in this workbook. And we'll click here for where we want to put it. And I'll scroll down, and I'll put it right here. I'll hit Enter. And everything is all set up here. I'm going to click OK. Wow, this is a lot of stuff, right? So this is not really all that difficult to interpret. This is just some summary statistics. How many students were from each state? Well, 30 were from Delaware, 30 from New Jersey, etc., etc. This is just adding up the math scores, which we know how to do. We could do this ourselves. We could do equals sum. You know, we could just hit alt equals and it would give us the same exact number 21 23 but we don't need to do that I'll delete that and similarly the, the average is just the average of that so the 21 23 divided by 30 is just going to give us the 70.76666 now the ANOVA table this is the new thing all right this is the analysis of variance all of this has already been done for us so it's giving us our between groups variation of 2474, it's giving us our within groups variation of 22,000. Okay, and it's doing all the work, so this divided by 3 is going to give us our mean square between groups, and the 22,000 divided by 116 is going to give us the mean square within groups. And this F statistic we know is just this one here, the between groups variation divided by within groups variation, it's going to give us 4. And it's also reproducing our critical statistic we calculated before. So that's why we had input that value for alpha in that dialog box of 0.05. The rest of this stuff is not related to alpha. This is the only cell that's really related to alpha right here. And you can see that it's the same exact number that we had calculated before. So it's a good thing to calculate both to make sure that you've got the right critical F statistic. And just to be clear, the main takeaway message from this table here is our sample f. And I'll just highlight that here by selecting it, just to reproduce it here so it's clear what we're, we're interested in here. And our step four, add bold with control B. Our step four is just comparing these two. So 
is our sample f bigger than our critical f? So we have our sample f here, and up here is our critical f. Which one is bigger? Well, our sample f is bigger than our critical f. And we can see that this is our critical f, our sample f is out here. And when that happens, if we're in the tail of our distribution, then we're going to reject our null hypothesis. And step five, so if we're rejecting a null hypothesis, we're going with our research hypothesis up here, enter. And we're saying that average math scores of seventh graders differ by state. And we can say the probability that we're wrong is less than 0 0.05. couple final notes here. So the p-value here is actually the the probability associated with this particular sample f. So we could have done alpha equals 0 0.01 and this would still have been further to the right but we couldn't have gone much lower than that. And the second thing to note is that if we have significant results like we do we want to calculate our eta squared. So step six is to calculate eta squared and eta squared is just the sum of squares between divided by the sum of squared total. The squared deviations between groups is our 2474 divided by the total value the total sum of the squared deviations right there the 24900 is going to give us this number here. And if we want to convert that into a percentage, we just go to our Home tab and we can click on percentage here. This will only give us two decimal points. So we can see that it's 9.93%. And the way we want to interpret that is that we can say that 9.93% of the variation in seventh graders math scores is explained by the state in which they reside. And because this is less than 10%, we're going to say that this is a weak relationship. And recall we only do this when our results actually are significant, when we go with our research hypothesis.